Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, you may start your uh, question. Sir, thank you so much sa time, sir. Kaya nisagot ka, nga interviewin ka. Now, which is one of my uh, tasks in my subject is to interview a Filipino teacher working abroad. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about you from our friend uh, Rosalyn Ganadi, and it's a pleasure to finally meet you. <laughs> okay, before we begin, sir, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Irish A. Barry. I am an education unit earner in St. Michael College of Caraga. I was born and raised in Butuan City and currently working in a private sector. I graduated from AMA Computer Learning College uh, with a bachelor's degree in information technology. And I guess that's all. Thank you so much, sir, for giving okay. me an opportunity to introduce myself. Um, pwede na ba ako mag-start pag interview sa iyo, sir? Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, sir. First, please tell me about your uh, yourself. Yeah, I yeah, I think Rosalyn knows me well. I'm, mm -hmm. My name is Elizar, but yeah, you can call me Ellie. But most of my students, and because I've been teaching English for for almost 80 years now, I think seven or almost eight years. Because I was teaching in Cebu City. After graduated, I, I actually am from Butuan City. Mm -hmm. So after graduated, after graduated in Butuan, after a year of graduation, I moved to Cebu City. And I volunteered as a teacher in a special education department in Bandawa Technical Institute that was in Mandawi. And then I was working at the same time as a STEM teacher, mm -hmm. and like it, that's in the Philippines, for just approximately for two years at the same time, and I was working in a call center at the same time too, like and studying master in special education in Cebu Technological University. So like doing masters at the same time, it's really it takes time, you know, it takes effort, and it was really tiresome, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. Okay. So after in the year 2016, I moved to Thailand. I was working there as a teacher. I was working in an international school, and then I moved to the province of Thailand. And I, we, you know, I moved to the USA since I was working there as a teacher. And then, after my contract, every every end of the contract, I moved to a different country, and finally, I settled down here in Vietnam. And I got married to a Vietnamese. Mm, wow, graphic um, experience, or no? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, why did you be decide to become a teacher? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, my mom is a teacher, and she wanted, yeah, my mom is a teacher, and she wanted me to be a teacher as well. So it's actually one of her legacies is like she wanted, she wanted her son to be a teacher. So I'm teaching, and I think teaching is actually fun since one of my models. And during when I was, you know, during my elementary years was my teacher in elementary school. She was really a very nice teacher. She encouraged me to be a teacher like her. Mm -hmm. So like she told she I was an assistant with her when I was way back in elementary and high school too. So that inspires me to become a teacher. And I think teaching is really a worth doing job. Uh, well, that's nice. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're getting to the interview. <laughs> um, ko answer. Why you decide to teach abroad? Unsay. Yeah, that's a good Yeah, Go ahead. Okay, sir. <laughs> uh, I decide, you know what? The economy, economy in the Philippines, when we talk about salaries in the Philippines, it's incompetent. Because, you know, when you. I actually, when I was, when I was in high school, I dreamed of working abroad because considering the fact that the salary in the Philippines is incompetent. So, you know what, when I, the first time I was teaching in Cebu City, the salary there was only 5,000 and it was really not sufficient to sustain the living, right? Yes, so that urged me to find a venture or to find another job, I think, working abroad. And I was not expecting that I could get a job in Thailand. And knowing that I, you know, my friend, I had a friend in Thailand. Okay, that was the first country I visited because mm -hmm. I did not expect that I have to teach in Thailand. So the only thing that 
urged me to do is like my friend told me you have to come here in Thailand just tourist mm. not a teacher uh, tourist day ka dia sa una <laughs> yeah just tourist in Thailand then after like a couple of days just just one week mm. my friend told me there's a teach I mean there's a school who hired I uh, wanted to be I mean who wanted to have a teacher and then she, he told me that okay grab this opportunity and then I took that opportunity got interviewed and hired and got a job as a high school teacher in the English department of the Crescent International School mm -hmm. in Bangkok ah. and after that yes in Bangkok and I after a year then I moved to Ayutthaya that's another province of Thailand mm -hmm. <laughs> What the hell? I'm a teacher, Kadia. Yeah. God's grace. Uh, for answer, what are some of your challenges that you experience in teaching abroad? Well, generally, yeah, the first time I was teaching in Thailand, now I'm in Vietnam too, since there is always this impression that teaching abroad, it, you know, I was really hungry that time because my money was not sufficient mm -hmm. enough to sustain my living in Thailand. I was hungry. I I had, you know, I had to save a lot of, I, I have to economize my budget because the salary is, you know, it takes one month to wait for the salary. Mm -hmm. And the first day of teaching in Thailand, you know, the students there in an international school were diverse. Mm -hmm. they, they come from different countries. You know, knowing the fact that they come from different countries and I'm from the Philippines, so obviously, like, it's really difficult to get their attention compared to the students in the Philippines. You just get angry and everybody everybody uh, is quiet. Mm -hmm. But here it's in in Thailand that was really difficult. In that was in an international school. Mm -hmm. International school. When I moved to public, a public school, it was also different because the students number compared to the Philippines actually the number of students in the Philippines is higher compared mm -hmm. to here. In my class, I had 34 students and grade six students. I wouldn't say quiet because English is not their language. Mm -hmm. And it was really difficult because they really couldn't understand what you're talking about. Now, that's the most challenging is the language barrier and how to control your students without any assistance. Mm -hmm. You don't have any assistance at all. Only you in the classroom and all of them couldn't speak English. Just, hi, my name is. That's the most challenging language mm -hmm. barrier communication. So, so more dili, yeah. uh, so more dili, more dili kaysa para hadiri ang English grade one palang anak sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but, unsa, unsa may ilang mga unsa may subject nila sir? Uh, unsa kung bagadiri ka bag ulang ng mother tongue dili ah uh, to dia apod uh, ko apod kana Vietnamese po ang usually nga ilang language nga nagamit dia or subject mo focus yeah. dia ah. Actually, before English was not important in Thailand, but and now in Vietnam, I'm in Vietnam now. So before English was not really that important. So I think the government is like having this in initiative that English is now giving a priority. So it, it's different in the Philippines because science is taught as English, mm. not in Filipino. Mm. But here, science is taught in Vietnamese. Mm. In Thailand, science is taught in Thai language, mm. not in English. That's why that's the problem there. It's very mm -hmm. difficult. It's totally different from our our education in the Philippines. The country. So, right. sir, no, kay mas koan pa ng English with sa ato. Right. Uh, uh, next question, sir, is as our current situation that we are in pandemic period, how can you handle the teaching to your students? Oh yeah, as you know, I think I have I got a question to online teaching because before, why before we adapt the, the online teaching in Vietnam it was totally a pain on the neck it's like exasperating because the students don't know how to operate their devices or mm -hmm. the online how to turn and how to connect how like how to call like this it was totally different difficult but since I I am also teaching Japanese students online like for oh. yeah online I'm also teaching Japanese students online for like I, I spent six hours a day that's online. So I think mm -hmm. they are far better than, than Vietnamese. It's because of they are adept in the technology, right? Mm -hmm. So compared here, 
in Vietnam. So the students online teaching is new during this COVID-19. So I think we've been doing this for over a year now. So I think they're, they got accustomed to it. They're okay with it already, but still needs guidance. And even like we incorporate something in, in order to make the class entertaining. So we're mm -hmm. still struggling, but, but they are getting accustomed to it. So I think there is the problem has reduced. So, murag, uh, mas mas pre oh, sa mga mas preferences sa online teaching or sa face to face? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Face to face, because I got accustomed to face to face. You can use whatever mm -hmm. techniques, technique strategies that you have in a classroom. You can let the students fly, but online class, you mm -hmm. don't know the stu what the students are doing. Yes. Most students are turning off their camera. Yes. So <laughs> behind that, <laughs> call their name. Okay, you understand question wait what question well, that? yes sir mostly good you not good i never get my you know you know my i have always stressed and i tend to shout you're not listening mm -hmm. if you can see my textbook right here you're not listening to my discussion you leave my class right now mm -hmm. <laughs> my attitude is like that but it's not good. Not good. Mm. Yes. Uh, next is how do you teach 21st century learners integrate technology and guide students to be global citizens? Ah, yeah, that's a challenging one. I think, you know, teaching these young, these 21st century learners mm -hmm. are really quite challenging. It takes courage to teach them because, you know, they are most of my students in Vietnam are adept with technology. They're skillful with technology. And I think, I think most of them have devices at school, but I don't require them to bring gadgets at school. But in this, in my, in a way, in my way of teaching them, I think, you know, I have to customize my styles and teaching strategies in order to, or according to their needs. Because, you know, Way back when I was younger, we didn't have this kind of technology, but now we're, we're teaching smart students and we have to develop their critical thinking skills, synthesis, and in order to guide them, I think what I usually do in my class is I let those students teach, the, teach them, like uh, share your, share whatever you have, like share your culture, because mm -hmm. in that way, because they know their culture, and that allows the students to think and expand their horizon, right? and reflect themselves too. It will also like it it will also benefit those students around him or her to interact together. In that way they develop their collaborative thinking, mm -hmm. collaborative or teamwork, right? And and in another way of guiding them is that in my school here we usually go to some some museums and like look at like we have this field trip. Like it happens every and um, it happens twice a year we usually like, go to the museums and art and look at these uh, paintings from other countries in that way they can visualize oh this is this picture comes from a different country which is really totally different from mine so that's like we also have to teach the cultures mm -hmm. because cultures teaching culture is very important it, in that way we can develop we can develop, we can exchange our culture to them. Oh, your culture is different from mine. So we have to respect, mm -hmm. we have to respect each other. And that's, they can also develop awareness with that, like what not to do because they, mm -hmm. since they know about my culture, our yes. culture in the Philippines, it develops awareness. And in that way, and also I could also share the culture in Thailand. So that's like, it incorporates a lot of like a global, a global student like mm -hmm. he or she can figure out what's the culture there and what they practice to do so it it is yeah it, it's something that it can develop their rationale or thinking skills mm -hmm. right? so aware sila nga sa imong culture po do sa ila sa uban nga culture ana siguro sir mm -hmm. right right <laughs> we can be aware of that too yes yeah, sir uh, what can you say about this statement as a global teacher act locally but think globally Oh, act locally, but think globally. Well, that is, yeah, that's that's a good statement. Like I, we have, me as a teacher, yeah, I act like, you know, as a teacher in the Philippines, I act this, of course, like we act 
actually we act this kind of like just a teacher but we think globally we think the needs of the students because with with our strategies we think that our strategies is, our strategies are not yet sufficient enough to deal with different students in different countries so in that in that case we have to be we have to be adept enough like not only in the local context but also in the other countries we have to be we have to be sufficient and knowledgeable enough to to know about different cultures and different contexts and to know the students background so uh, as a teacher not only as a local teacher but we also have to expand our knowledge and we have to learn a lot we have to calibrate ourselves with the global trends right not only in the local context okay sir thank you sir uh which do you like most to teach local or abroad and do i <laughs> yeah yeah i have less experience teaching local in my in the mm. philippines i have less experience in working there so i you know i i think in my case i used to teach abroad and i think i'm getting accustomed to it so i don't yeah i don't want to teach in the philippines again <laughs> because knowing the fact that that most of the filipino teachers they're asking me there like they i have a group and they wanted to help i mean they wanted my help to work abroad too here in vietnam so i told them if you want to work in vietnam i can get you i can help you land a job so most of them they resigned from teaching in a public schools in the philippines so that simply implies that in my case i don't want to teach there because teachers they work a lot mm -hmm. right? i rather teach abroad because full day imagine my full-time job i only teach three hours to four hours a day no, sir. if you work in yeah if you yes that's true oh amazing if you work in the public schools mm -hmm. in local in the philippines oh my god you work more than 12 hours mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so here four hours can you answer no kanam gamay ra oras para magkuan ka magtundo True. And yeah. then the salary is the salary no. is far higher than the it. public school. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that time, sir. Uh, have a great day, sir, and stay safe. Uh, great. Right. Yes, bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bye. bye, -bye.